Hello Internet, it's been a bit of a while, all my plans went down the drain, I lost my voice, I broke my tablet that I used to record and edit these on, the replacement broke, I, uh, I had to wait for that to get fixed, and long story short, I'm super super late with my final psycho video. This month, April, was supposed to be 80s Vampire Month. I want to do that properly, so that's going to be uh, in May now, which I'm super excited for. I will get round to the final video of Psycho Month as well, defending the remake, Gus Van Sant's film. Very keen to do that. Very upset that some of the work I already did for that got lost when I broke my tablet. It's my fault. Um, but I've got my voice back and I'm really keen to talk. So. Uh, what I actually want to talk about uh, is a film that I showed my other half uh, the other week and she absolutely loathed it and she's in very, very good company for hating Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. Written and directed by Kim Henkel, the man uh, half responsible for the script of the original, made in 1994 and not released until 1997 when Matthew McConaughey's star was on the rise. Yes, this is the one with McConaughey in it and Rene Zellweger. And it is almost universally loathed by Texas Chainsaw fans. And the first time I saw it in context after one, which is an absolute masterpiece, genre defining, and two, which doesn't get nearly enough love. One of the greatest horror sequels ever made, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. She has a bed in mind, to my mind, with Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Uh, another superb horror sequel that doesn't get nearly enough love. A sort of by the numbers part three, which I think's fun, and um, was uh, the slasher in part three was actually the film censors. Uh, to this, just the mad box of frogs which after subsequent uh, takes on Texas Chainsaw, uh, if you want to bring yourself up to speed with what I call the wacky continuity of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, check out the video from a little while ago I did for that. But after this, which essentially killed the franchise for a while, we had to go into remake territory and then a prequel to the remake and then a sequel to the original. Anyway, some of those, were, one of those was good. The rest are dour to downright nonsense. And now we're going to get a, a prequel called Leatherface from the makers of Chainsaw 3D. Um, the nuttiness of this becomes to me more and more appealing. Just the complete and absolute out there nature of this movie. Now, I'm not saying that this is a good movie. It's not. The pacing is all over the place. Uh, like I say, my other half loathed it. She said it was boring. Uh, and that's possibly the worst crime any film can commit, especially a horror film. But, but, uh, McConaughey's wild-eyed, gurning, just absolutely out there-ness uh, W.E., one of the other killers, speaking pretty much entirely in quotes from famous people. Uh, Grandpa, who gets so disillusioned with the whole thing during the dinner scene, <laughs> when no one's looking, he just gets up and shuffles off and fucks off out of the film and doesn't come back. Let's talk about the wide-eyed, wild conspiracy theory that this film puts out there that uh, this family and McConaughey in particular is working for the people who secretly run the world on the side of his wrecking truck is written Illuminati and he says that the FBI are monitoring his house 24 7 and have got bugs and cameras in every room and up until this point you think it's the ravings of an absolute madman until one of them turns up at the house <laughs> and tells him he's doing a shit job uh, and then proceeds to have one of his minions chop off McConaughey's head with the propeller blade of a plane as if uh, Cary Grant had died in the cornfield in North by Northwest and the film had just ended there. <laughs> this is after, of course, 
Rene Zellweger's character, Jenny, jumps into the RV with Mr. and Mrs. Spottage, the uh, uh, retired married couple who presumably are driving across country and have sunk their retirement money into this RV, drinking Bloody Mary's first thing in the morning. <laughs> um, McCona one of McConaughey's first lines when he when when he arrives and kills kills the injured boy in a road crash and the guy the other teenager that's seen him do it says what are you, what are you going to do next and McConaughey says well first I'm going to kill you it ain't no fucking biggie <laughs> and then the kid just starts running down the road doesn't have the sense on a track in the middle of a wooded area. Uh, where a pickup truck's following him, to turn either left or right and go into the woods where the truck can't follow, but runs in a straight line until he runs out of breath and then stops and has a conversation with Connor Hayes Vilma, who just pulls up next to him like it's the most natural thing in the world. Hey, Mr. Stop, you're scaring me. It's got some surprisingly strong female characters for a piece of trash. And there's a guy, oh, I need to name check him, but I've forgotten his name. He's on the message boards of IMDb. And the thread that he started is called My Theory. It's worth reading. I don't subscribe to it 100%. But an awful lot of what he says echoes some of the stuff that's going on in the back of my mind, which is that Kim Henkel cannot be a fool. He must know what, what he's filming and then what he's what he's making. He must know how utterly, utterly ridiculous it is. And the suggestion is, um, when, when Rothman, this, this Illuminati guy, comes to tell uh, McConaughey, Vilma, that he's just, he has one job, which is to instill pure horror in people, and it's just not working. It's not working like it used to. That this is some kind of meta-commentary on the futility of trying to capture the magic of the original one-off, lightning-in-a-bottle movie, and Rothman kind of just shuts down the whole operation. <laughs> he just kind of like looks around this crazy setup with full drag leather face and uh, filmer with his sort of robotic leg thing going on, just and just thinking, you know what? This isn't working. Let's try something else. And surely Hankel at some point was, must have just thought, this is kind of ridiculous. Let's just go for it. It is mad. It's bonkers. It's, some people loathe it with a passion. I just think it's so out there, so irreverent, that the older I get, do you know what? You choose your battles. Texas Chainsaw 1 exists. 2 is a stunning sequel. I love them. The rest are just, the rest are pretty much just circus acts. The Platinum Dunes remake had some nice touches and some nice scenes and Ali Ernie is excellent value in it. The prequel, mm, not so much. Texas Chainsaw 3D, utter trash. This is a good six pack movie, by which I mean, if you sit down with your friends and some beers and you just want to have a laugh, I think, I think it's worth it for McConaughey alone. Ain't no fucking biggie. What do you think of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Next generation. Do you hate it with a passion? Do you think it's just mental and you don't really pay it any mind? Is it a guilty pleasure? Uh, have the years been kinder to it as more and more shitty movies join the Texas Chainsaw franchise, which really, truly only has one and two, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. If it ain't directed by Toby Hooper, it ain't really a Texas Chainsaw movie. So can you live with it uh, on that basis? Uh, let me know what you think, and normal service will be resumed very soon. Uh, I will be talking about Gus Van Sant's Psycho remake. We're going to be doing 80s Vampire Month. After that, I think I'm going to do uh, uh, a mini theme series that I want to call Blood on the Tracks about uh, train and underground and subway station themed horror movies. Uh, 
Wolfen has just come through the door. And because the hunger features in uh, 80s Vampire Month, I got mildly obsessed with the work of Whitley Stryber, the author who wrote Hunger and The Wolfen that these movies are based on. So I'm going to do a book and movie comparison of Wolfen. Uh, I'm going to do uh, Hammer, uh, Dennis Wheatley, a cult double bill, The Devil Rides Out Unto the Devil a Daughter. Uh, tons of other stuff. There's tons of other good stuff. If I don't lose my voice again, if I don't break this bit of kit, then we will continue on this wild ride. I'm going to sign off now because I'm talking utter nonsense.